Hey guys, uh, Stefan here, and today this is a video tutorial teaching how to add simple textures and some really useful techniques that you're going to get to know to use with Blender. Um, yeah, this will also look over how to bring in textures into the Blender game engine and even how to export them to Unity, but that'll be very small so it won't be very in-depth, so if you're looking for something... Um, Yep, this is not the video for you, but this is how to. This is for people who don't know how to texture and how to. They want to make uh, things in their scene look good. So here's your cube. You start out. If you want to get rid of this cube right now, hit just hit the delete button or the X button. Either one will get rid of it. Now you want to add something. All you have to do to add objects is Shift and then A, and you can add a plane. And let's size that up right now. And if you push a zero, you can go to your, what your camera is seeing, your camera view. And F12 is to render. Rendering is very important. That is what, that's what you see. That's what your scene is looking like. So very plain, very very plain. It's just a plane right now. That's all it is. It's gray and it's boring. So if you right click on that, you can go over here to the materials uh, little window. So you're gonna want to add this a new material. So click new, and now you have this new material. Um, okay, if you just want to change color, very simple thing to do, you just go over here, coloring, there you go, there's your color. But we're going to look into things more intense than that, because that's how cool we are. This here is your texturing window, this is where all textures will be applied and mostly edited. So click on that, and create a new texture. Um, if you just want it to be one of Blender's defaults, they are all here. You have blend, clouds, distorted, noise, point density, all that stuff. So right now, if you just want to see how it looks, you can click both to see how it looks on your object and uh, what the actual texture looks like. So you can change the size around here. You can change uh, the depth. The depth just means the quality, pretty much. And if you're dealing with uh, cubed objects or objects with multiple faces and edges and stuff like that, you're going to click cubed because that way it displays the texture properly. If you don't, it'll look very stretched. Um, yeah. If you go over to the mapping, and let's say this is this is way too big. This is way too blown out for you. You can shrink that by bringing all these down. Let's bring these all to two. And now they're a little bit smaller. And if you render it, that's what it looks like right now. So that's basically manipulating the actual texture itself. This here is the influence panel. Uh, this panel is the most important one you're ever going to use. This is all like your your standard texture. This is the color, uh, the intensity, and uh, all that can be affected here. But that'll be looked on in later tutorials. This is just adding to uh, adding textures. Pardon me. Normal, we're going to look at very, very soon in this tutorial. That is one of the most helpful things, and it's what really pulls off the appearance of your image. So this is the basic panel that we're going to be looking at today. Um, not too much about it has to be said. Specularity, this is what controls specularity. You can play around with all these controls. Shading, the amount of shading, the um, environment lighting, the reflectivity, all that will be there. All right, um, so let's say we want to add our image. This is where the custom the customizability comes in. Don't know if I said that right, but that's where all the uh, what you want to add comes into play. So to do that, you have to add an image. You go to image and you can open up your image. So let's find where your image has been saved. So mine here, I'm going to use this one. It's basically going to be a bulletin board texture, but this is not showing you what an actual bulletin board looks like. Believe me, I this is definitely not what one looks like. So we can just move this light around to make sure the specularity is all good for the tutorial. And, whoa, that specularity is way too glossy. You can barely see the texture. It's only around the edges. So you go back to the object panel, and you can turn down the intensity of the specularity. And if you turn up the hardness... It'll actually make it smaller for you. So now if you render it again, it won't be as strong. Okay, so you have your bulletin board, but it's just smooth. It looks smooth. There's no bumps, there's no grooves to it, there's nothing whatsoever. And that's where the magical normal button comes into play. So if you click normal, 
if you can see here in this window, I don't know if you guys can see it, but it gave it bumps. It it distorts the specularity. It makes it look like it has grooves. It makes you look like if you run your hand along it, you would feel bumps. So if we render that now, you can see all these bumps and grooves along it. It distorts the specularity and it makes it look fantastic. Uh, if that's too strong, you could turn it down. If you put it into the negatives, then it's like it's pulling down instead. It, it's like it's making holes instead of bumps. Um, yeah, so let's just put that back to one for the tutorial. And uh, that's basically how to add textures. That's basically what it is. That's how you add textures. That's how you affect them. And uh, later on, we're going to be looking at UV mapping because uh, that's very helpful. And, and later on, tutorials will teach you how to... Uh, overlay textures like let's say actually we can do that right now let's say you want to add you want this bump mapping but you want it to be on another image you don't want the bump mapping to be for the bulletin board so you go and you turn off color and you now go and now it's just plain it's just the bumps and you want to add another texture so add a new one and let's say you want the clouds if you render it now that purple cloud texture would be bumped if you want to add an image, just do the same thing. You go to cloud, or where the tech, the type is, select an image or a movie, and let's just pick this carpet. We're going to make this carpet bumpy as hell. Rugburn, lol. Okay, so once again, make sure it's set to cube, because before it looked very distorted, and now if you render it, that will have, that will have bump mapping on it. It's a very cool thing to use. Uh, be sure to get used to it because in the tutorial on how to make a guitar, we will be using that a lot. Okay, next section of this tutorial is bringing this into the game engine. Game engine is very simple in Blender to use. It's so simple, you push the P button. Whoa, that doesn't look like the texture I have on. Why not? Well, Blender doesn't know that your texture is applied to that. It's just rendering the plane. Because in your viewport, it doesn't look like it's just the plane. That's what it's rendering. So what, what you have to do is make a new window for yourself here. And go to the UV image editor. Close that. That's just the render. Okay. So you need to unwrap this to display this in the UV image editor. So just hit, go into tab, into edit mode, make sure all the vertices are selected. Just by pushing A, that selects everything in edit mode, and hit U to unwrap. Um, if your object is more complex, hit U than smart project. Um, it just lays it out better for you for texturing. And you want to create a new image so that Blender knows to apply it to this. And then all you have to do, you make sure you hit tab twice, so now it's applied properly. And uh, you can go in textured mode to see it better if you want. And all you have to do to go now is go to the render panel, go to bake, and just click, make sure it's on full render, and click bake. As you can see here, it is now applying the texture that I have from here onto the plane so that Blender knows that this texture is actually on the plane. And now if you push P, you can even see the bump mapping on it. You push P, and that's what it looks like. I would not recommend Blender's game engine for intense game developers out there. Um, I know that when we started using it, we wanted to, but don't want to put down Blender, but it's awful. It's the worst. It's not a very good game engine. It's not very strong. You can't get a lot done. I would recommend using Unity. It's a very helpful game engine. Um, very strong. All you have to do, really, to bring objects from Blender into Unity is just push File, Export as a Colada, and s export it to the file that your Unity file saved in, and it'll just update automatically. Okay, that is the basic texturing tutorial for Blender. I hope um, anyone who's new to Blender has found this helpful. Please let us know what you've thought about it. Um, really did hope that you enjoyed it and learned some stuff about it. Later on, we will be going into uh, more intense UV image editing, so be sure to look forward to those tutorials. And in the meantime, be sure to study this and try to get familiar with this, because there will be a lot of this being used for the guitar and a lot of um, UV mapping. So try to make some uh, cool objects, get some textures on them, and tell us what you think. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Let us know if there's any tutorials we can make for you. And um, other than that, happy blending.